Morning, friends. Today is uh, Wednesday, March 2nd, and it is Ash Wednesday. And um, I hope that you will join us in person or online this evening for worship. We'll uh, begin to worship at 7.30, and I'll give you uh, some more details at the end of this e-news today. This morning, uh, I've invited Ginny Petraglia, who's the president or moderator of the Board of Deacons here at Elf and Wild, to share with us a little bit. And before uh, she begins to talk about what the deacons do, I wanted to give us just a little bit of background, biblical understanding, that the office of deacon uh, is a biblical one from the book of Acts. And so I wanted to read from Acts chapter 6 so that you would understand um, what they are tasked with in the Word of God. In those days, it says, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal pleased the whole group and they chose Stephen, a man of full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, it lists the other uh, first deacons. And they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So this is uh, where deacons, the office of deacon was initiated. And so the first responsibility of the deacon was to take care of the needs of the widows that were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. Uh, so in many churches, the history of deacons were those who took care of the kitchen and did the meals, uh, taking that from this text about uh, the daily distribution of food. But the real intention there was to take care of the needs of the widows, or we've expanded that, anyone who might fall through the cracks or be overlooked. And I just want to say that our deacons have really grown in that understanding and serve well the very needs uh, of our seniors and other people. And so we're grateful for all that they do in the name of Christ. And with that, let me introduce to you Ginny Petragli, uh, the president of the Board of Deacons. She does a great job at organizing them for the service of Christ. Welcome, Ginny. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, as Dirk said, I'm president of the Deacons. This is uh, going into my second year uh, in that term. And uh, just to let you know, we have currently 21 active Deacons, and the Deacons meet monthly on the second Sunday at 12.30, and we usually meet here at the church. So what is the deacon's mission? Our mission is to serve our church membership and community uh, with the power of Jesus Christ, and our service is an on-hand and active ministry. So what is it that deacons are doing? Well, our biggest um, project, if you will, is what we call the Seasoned Saints Deacon Advocate. And the Seasoned Saints are those church members who are age 80 and older. And we kind of take them under our limbs and make sure they don't fall through the cracks and keeping them in contact with things going on in the church, providing any needs they uh, may have that arise, um, send cards, phone calls uh, as they may like, or anything else that may arise as a result of the communication between the deacon and the seasoned saint. One other thing we do um, on the lines of that is a new program called Special Friends, um, even highlighting more uh, about what Dirk said, those folks falling through the cracks. These are folks that aren't 80 years of age, might be friends of the church, whether it be through Mills Ministry, um, a loved one, a family member, or whatever it might be that we've identified that they just need some 
uh, reach out and contact um, and um, feel welcome and loved. And as part of the church ministry, just being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Uh, other things we do, um, coming up on March 20th is the blood drive. We have it twice a year. So I encourage you, if you are able to donate, to sign up. There is information in the church bulletin. We do coffee time. That has been brought back and is now very popular after the COVID experience. And so we share in that ministry with Jen Cohen and set up coffee and donuts uh, twice a month. We also do uh, the food bank. Um, as you know, the boxes that are placed throughout the church, uh, we take those items down to the food pantry there in Etna. We also uh, have uh, coordinating the ushers each Sunday. The all church picnic uh, that we have, um, usually held in August. And then also we do seasonal things, uh, making sure at Easter, uh, the pulpit is decorated appropriately with Easter flowers and a Christmas poinsettias, as well as decorating uh, the church. So those are some of the things uh, that the deacons currently do on a regular basis. Some of the things that we are working on um, as a result of the COVID experience, we received uh, quite a few phone calls uh, in the church office about uh, various uh, needs to be done in the community. So it got us to thinking, how can we handle that appropriately? And also, uh, how can the deacons help with that, but at the same time, still be tuned into our seasoned saints? And one of the things we are currently working on is called a resource book. And in that resource book will be uh, some guidelines, some tasks and resources that have come out of these questions. It's still in progress, not sure when it'll be available, but um, that is something um, that to look forward to. And the other thing that we are doing is always finding ways and opportunities to get our seasoned saints together. Um, amidst the uh, COVID um, restrictions, we know they're loosening up now, which is great. So uh, look forward to uh, planning those events. And one thing I want you to prayerfully consider is when uh, the church office asks for nominations of officers, and specifically the deacons, that you prayerfully consider um, this ministry. Um, it's, I can't begin to describe it, it's ministry of being the hands and feet of Jesus, but also reaching out to our seasoned saints and just the love, the peace, um, and the willingness to be able to help others is indescribable and there usually aren't any words to, um, properly address that. So please consider that, um, when the nominations, uh, come up, uh, later this fall. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. I wanted to uh, just again say thank you to those who are serving on the Board of Deacons. They do a great job. It's often behind the scenes and unrecognized or acknowledged. So we are grateful uh, for that ministry and their willingness to serve Christ that way. I wanted to finish just by uh, reminding us of the schedule through Lent. Again, tonight, Ash Wednesday, we will have a worship at 7.30 in the sanctuary. Uh, there will be ashes for those who want them, but certainly a not required type of thing. Uh, also then, every Sunday we'll continue to worship at 8.30 and 11.10. Uh, the sermon series through Lent will be about the, uh, the gifts of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5.22. Uh, um, so I hope that you'll enjoy that. Also, um, on Wednesday nights, beginning next Wednesday, March 9th, we'll have an adult Zoom Bible study, and there will also be a children's uh, Zoom activity and class at the same time. 6.30, they will both begin. The adult class will go for an hour, the children's for 30 minutes. And then uh, in April, when we uh, come to Holy Week, April 10th is Palm Sunday. It'll be the same schedule, uh, 8.30 and 11.10, uh, with Sunday school in between. And then that week, though, we'll have a Monday, Thursday service at 7.30, a Good Friday Tenebrae service at 7.30, 
And then Easter morning, uh, April 17th, we'll have a worship at 7 a.m. outside sunrise service. And then 8.30 and 11.10 services again on Easter morning. Looking forward to this season of Lent, I hope that you are also both in person and if necessary, uh, online. Thank you for being in touch with us. We are grateful to hear from you. If there's anything we can do for you, if you know of someone who needs a call from the deacons or a Stephen minister or anyone else, please let the church know. Give us an email, a text, or a phone call. I wanted to conclude uh, today with thanking the deacons and others who uh, rallied around the Tuttle family on Saturday morning as we had the funeral service for Dr. Tuttle and then a luncheon following that in Fellowship Hall. The hospitality and the love and the support was just overwhelming and a great witness to the spirit of Christ in this place. So thanks be to God uh, for that witness. Um, I also want to ask you to continue to pray for Debbie Gazzi, our office manager. We're hoping that she's going to be in to ease back into having some hours here in the office this week. Uh, but Amanda Gatos and Melanie Simley continue to uh, carry the work each and every day. We are grateful for people who are uh, willing to give themselves and their energy uh, for the ministry of Christ here. We love you. Uh, we do miss seeing many of you still. We're grateful to be seeing new people face to face and to know that so many are still joining us online. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.